Francesca, welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is the last day of our tofu series and today I'm giving you something sweet. Okay, here's the deal. Tofu is much more versatile than people give it credit for and we can use tofu in our desserts. So today we're going to be making a vegan tiramisu with tofu. We're gonna use soft tofu for this and it's gonna make a creamy, nice filling similar to the you know traditional way of making it with mascarpone cheese and everything like that. So. I'm excited for this recipe. It's a good one. It was actually in one of my ebooks that I released a while ago, but I've kind of like pulled those ebooks off uh, the internet for purchase right now. So I just figured, you know, I'll give you guys this recipe from the ebook. It's a really good one, and it was one that I was really proud of at the time. So I want it out there more in the world than just in an ebook from, you know, two years ago. So I'm excited for this. It's so good. It's so delicious. And I'm excited to have vegan tiramisu in my fridge again. Mm, so good. I loved, love, love tiramisu. That was my, my favorite dessert. Like there's just nothing better to me. I love that. So as always, the full written out recipe is on my blog. Check the description box down below for that. I will also have all the ingredients written out down below as well. Links for everything, social media, cookbook, podcast, everything you want to know in the description box. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tofu series. Thank you so much for watching the last few days. Thank you for being here. Again, if you like series, if you like this stuff, please be sure to interact with the videos, you know, share it, tell your friends about it. I, I can't tell you enough how important you all engaging with these videos is for me to know what you like. So with all that being said, let's go make some tiramisu. So like I just mentioned, we're using soft tofu for this. And if you look, it has the most amount of water. So it has the least amount of calories and the least amount of protein. Before we do that, we're gonna make our vegan lady fingers. So we're gonna combine some chickpea flour and water together to make kind of like a chickpea egg replacer. Definitely go check out the blog post for my notes on egg replacers, chickpea flour, and all this stuff. You're gonna whisk it up until it is nice and thick and smooth like this. Put it to the side for a second. Then I'm measuring out our organic cane sugar. Make sure to use organic sugar so that way it is vegan friendly, not potentially processed with bone char. Then add your vegan chickpea egg in there and you're gonna mix it up until it kind of almost makes like a dough. Just keep mixing and mixing. You'll see the end texture in a second. It kind of looks like, I don't know, Play-Doh, wet sand, whatever you wanna call it, but it looks like a dough already. So then we're going to add in some vanilla extract. Give that another little mix together. Next up, we're going to add in our all-purpose flour. Before I add it in, I'm just going to take my whisk, run it through, get out any large clumps. You can also sift it, whatever you like to do. Add that into our bowl. Then we're going to add in some baking powder and cornstarch and water. And now I'm going to slowly incorporate more water as we go. So you can see I'm gonna start mixing it. Obviously it's gonna be way too dry at first. So then I'll add in a little more water. I'll keep mixing, add a little more water. And you'll notice I'm using my kitchen scale. I really like using the kitchen scale for baking because baking is science and it's very precise. So I highly suggest you use a kitchen scale. Then I'm gonna get in there with my hands, nice clean hands, no rings or anything. And we are just going to start kneading our dough together until it looks something like this. I can form it into a ball. It will be slightly sticky and tacky, so don't worry about that. But as you can see, it's manageable. I can move it around. Then we're gonna scoop one tablespoon approximately of our dough and you're gonna take your hands, again, nice clean hands, and you're just gonna roll it between your hands like this to form it kind of into a oblong shape. Is that the right word here, oblong? I think it is. And then I'm just gonna like round it off, but we're making like a lady finger shape here. And that's pretty much it. As you do this, the dough might start to stick to your hands a little bit. So just wash your hands in between if all of a sudden you're like kind of covered in the dough from this. And these vegan lady fingers come out really, really good. And I probably should have spaced them out on the pan a little bit more. You'll see after we bake them in a few minutes, they get kind of stuck together, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. So we're gonna bake at 350 Fahrenheit for 14 minutes, pop those in the oven, all done. They're gonna come out, they look something like this, as you could see. Some of them kind of got stuck together, but again, it's just like not a big deal. I'll rip them apart later. Let these cool. Let's work on our cream. So we're taking that soft tofu, and then we're gonna take some vegan cream cheese. I'm actually using the one from Tofuti because I really like that one. So we're gonna put everything in the blender. So. I drained my soft tofu, adding that in there. Then we're gonna add in about half a cup of vegan cream cheese. Then we're gonna add in some vanilla extract, more organic sugar, and then we're gonna add in your non-dairy milk of choice. This ripple milk is so good. If you haven't tried it, can't recommend it enough. And that's pretty much it. The cream is very, very easy to make. And you're just gonna blend that until it is nice and smooth. And when you taste this on its own, it might have a slight taste of tofu, but I promise in the whole tiramisu altogether, it doesn't taste like that. 
our lady fingers are all cooled, so as you can see, they're nice and like hardened up. The bottoms get a little bit golden, and I'm, they should be pretty easy to rip off. Like they might stick a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal if some of that sticks on the paper, don't worry. And then you can see they're like really easy to break up just in half. So now we are going to start dunking our lady fingers in some espresso, or you can use coffee, whatever you like, and just kind of dunk them in there. Be careful with them, they might be a little fragile, and pop them in your pan. I'm using a nine by 11 baking dish. If your lady finger breaks, do not worry. Do not worry. Scoop it out, pop it in there, it doesn't matter. For these little sides that I can't fit a whole lady finger in, I'm just gonna cut them into half, into thirds, like whatever I can kind of squeeze in there just to fit so there's some nice structure in there. And then we're gonna add our cream on top of here. So just pour about half of it right on there. And you can then use like a spoon, a spatula, a knife, whatever, to just evenly distribute that out. And you'll see it's pretty thin right now. It's gonna thicken up when we chill it in the fridge. And then we're just going to layer again. Italians, we love our layers. Lasagna, tiramisu, we like layers. So I have a little espresso left over. I'm just pouring that on top so that way it doesn't get wasted. And then we'll add the rest of our cream on there that we made. Beautiful. Oh, you could just eat this by itself. Spreading it all out again with my spoon just to make sure to cover everything really well. Now, we're testing your patience. Cover this and you leave it alone for the next eight hours or overnight. If you're really on a time crunch, five to six hours could work, but the longer this sits, the better it gets. It is now the next day. I let this sit for a full 24 hours. You can see that cream is thickened up. Even some of the lady fingers absorbs a little bit. We're going to top it with the unsweetened cocoa powder. You can just take like, I'm using a kind of a strainer here just to sift it over top. And that's it. Now we can finally, we can finally cut into this. And that first piece to get out is a little rough, okay? It's not the best, it doesn't always look the prettiest, but we got it out, we did it, and whew, beautiful, gorgeous, makes me want to sing because it's so good. I mean, come on, does that not just look... Mm. And like, I know it's not the most beautiful tiramisu, but you don't want your tiramisu to look pretty. If the tiramisu looks neat and perfect and layered, I literally do not want it. I want I want it to look like this, because then I know it's good. And also, my non-vegan grandma took a bite and was amazed, so gets a pass from grandma. And like I said earlier, the full burnout recipe is on my blog. If you like my videos, you already know. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff helps us to grow and helps us to spread more new vegan recipes. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. If you try this out, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Leave a comment on the blog. Make a, take a picture. Tag me on Instagram. I'd love to hear back from you guys. And yeah, I will see you soon with another video. Bye.